Folks, I want to invite you to stay tuned for a really special episode. I was really honored to have the opportunity to go to Unionville, Pennsylvania and go on a fox hunt, and I want to share that experience with you guys right here, right now. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment When you leave it all behind And climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one true horse I'm Gonna take a ride on one true horse So I'm here with Ivan Dowling and Ivan, your title is the Huntsman? Yeah, I'm the Huntsman of Mr. Stewart's Cheshire Foxhounds. And, and what's a real brief description of your, what's your job description? As I said, I'm the Huntsman, and I am employed here by the Hunt Club to manage, train, and hunt the hounds. I'm a, I'm a real master of accents. I'd say you're from South Carolina. Yeah, Alabama, somewhere. Somewhere like that. <laughs> I'm from the west coast of Ireland originally, um, a place called Galway. It's on the west coast. And how long have you been over here? I came to the States in 2001, and okay. I've been in this job since uh, 05. Well, can we go inside and sure, look no, around, no, take no a problem. tour? You're more than welcome. So Ivan, what's this room? This is the feed room. Um, they, they feed once a day and they feed communally as a pack. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't all come in together at once. First of all, they go into the, what we call the draw yard out here. It's just a collection yard. And the lighter hounds come in and get longer to eat. And the, the heavier hounds get less time to eat. So I try and keep a level weight on the hounds, on the whole pack. Um, pack in every sense of the word, like-minded, likeability. Even, physically alike, so I can't have some skinnier than others. They, they've got to, you know, they're athletes, so I try and keep them all the same. How many, how many hounds are in this kennel? There are 82 right now, including puppies. Okay. Um, we hunt on average. The, the, the hunting pack for this year is, uh, I think, 69 hounds, if I'm not mistaken. And on any given day, I'll hunt uh, up to 40 hounds. Yeah. Um, they're counted in couples, so I, I hunt anywhere between 17 and a half couple to 20 couple or 21 couple. And then you just feed right in this trough here? Yeah, we feed uh, high fat, high protein dog food, which is uh, kibble, it comes in bag form, 40 pound bags. I pour in up to 80 to 100 pounds, it depends on how much work they've done, of dry dog food. Um, and it's very high quality and high fat and high protein content. Um, so that they will have enough energy and condition to, to hunt through the season. And it pours out there as you see it, and uh, they, they eat what they can. Now, 80 to 100 pounds, and, and we're talking about 82 hounds. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at somewhere between a pound to, you know, maybe a pound and a quarter. Per hound. Uh, per hound. Per day. Now, in, in my mind, I just assume their dogs got to eat a lot more than that. But your, your hounds, when I was here hunting last year, they're fat. I mean, they, yeah, they look good. They look good. And I can, the, the feed is so good, I can control their weight in a week. I can move it up and down. In the winter, when they're running hard and it's colder, they'll get 120 pounds. Um, and if I think they need more, I'll mix in some milk with it, some powdered milk uh, for calves. Mm -hmm. That's got more fat again in it, and I'll make a, a warm mash for them. But for the most part, and you, you'll see the hounds, they're, they're in good shape. They're, they're, they're fit and lean, and, and uh, it, it, it works well for them. What's behind us back here? This is where they live. We call it the lodges. Um, so in the whole kennel, so there, there are four lodges down here, and that, that's where they live um, at nighttime. Okay. Well, let's, let's take a look at those. Yeah, sure. So this is a lodge. This is a lodge. Um, there are two sides to the lodge. Right now it's summertime or fall, but in the winter they sleep on straw and the doors get closed and these are heat lights. 
Um, they sleep together like a pack mm -hmm. because from the day they're born here, they're taught to be in a pack. Well, you don't have to do much teaching. They, a dog is naturally a pack animal. So they, they live together, they sleep together, they eat together, they hunt together, um, and, and that's part of our main goal. So. Now, Ivan, I, I've had hounds on and off all of my life. I hunted a uh, big game with hounds. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 82 hounds on this place, and it's silent. Yeah. How's that happen? Well, they're happy and comfortable, and you might hear them sing in a while, but uh, they're very, very happy, and they're, they're very well trained. Um, so right now they're turned outside and, and they're comfortable out there. They're familiar with their surroundings. They, <clears throat> they have no reason to be making noise. The natural thing for a dog to do uh, is be in a pack and to hunt, no matter what kind of dog it is. Um, all we're doing is facilitating their natural ability and, and need. So um, it's in my interest to keep them as happy as, as they can be so they can do the best job for us. So. Huh. Now I, I notice everything in here drains. Yeah, it drains down. In, into a drain and, and goes into holding tanks because over the night they, they make their mess here. We clean the place twice a day, um, which is vital. Uh, we've never had a flea in here. Um, we don't have any kind of infection. We, you know, so cleanliness is very important. So this place gets cleaned twice a day, every day, 365 days a year. So we're going to look at close to 20 hounds. Yeah, right now the whole pack, bar the puppies, are split into two lodges. They're, okay. more, they're more comfortable. I've tried to give them more space thinking I was being nicer to them. They prefer to be a little bit tighter. They um, do. They do, and that's their, their call. And yeah. I, I like, you know, with temperature, it's their call. If they're too cold, I'll do something about it. If they're too hot, I'll do something about it. it, it it's their call, basically. So you've got to sort of live, eat, sleep, and breathe these hounds. Yeah, pretty much all year round. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a way of life more than a job. It's like farming, you know, mm -hmm. it's a way of life. It, you, you don't do it because you're going to be wealthy or, you know, it, you do it because you love it. So. Mm -hmm. so do you have any pups here now? Yeah, we have some pups here. We have some pups that are six weeks old and I have some that are six months old. Well, let's go look at the little ones. Yeah, no problem. Hey, little guys. Hey, little guys. Hey, little guys, in you come. These guys are only six weeks old. Yeah, six weeks old. My word, they're big. Right now, this time of their life, they only get one chance to grow, so they've got open feed. Okay, so they're free choice right free now. Free choice right now. Any, anything they want, anything they can they run want. and play. And... They can eat around the clock if they want. And how long have they been weaned? Uh, they've been weaned now about a week. Okay. Um, at about four weeks, they started to eat their mother's food, and that told me that they're ready they're to ready. eat. How many litters a year do you raise? Probably four litters. It depends on, 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 the, on the season. But I usually choose four females and breed them every season. Okay. And it depends on what you get then from and that. How many, how many new hounds a year do you need out of four litters? Uh, I do, only, you, do you keep males and females together? No, the males I, I, I send to other packs. I, I send them away to other hunts. And I only keep, I only keep the females. Okay. Yeah, 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 sorry. I so only keep, you're, you're I only keep the, females. the females. I only hunt the females, and I, I usually have 10 to 20 new ones every, every season. Okay. Every year. Now, these pups are real social. Yeah. I mean, do you, do you, you must spend time with them? Yeah. They don't act cowardly or? No, the more time we spend with them, the, the better, and, and that goes for the pack as well. There's no substitute for spending time with them. So, uh, so if, you, if you're needing 10 to 20 new dogs a year, new hounds a year, mm -hmm. you must be retiring some. I do. I retire some. Um, every season, it's like a team. Some come on and some go off. And the, the, ones that, the ones that go off, this is a pretty fast operation when we're hunting. And, and there are packs that don't want to go so fast. Um, so they're always looking for some of our hounds that, that will, will do for them, but not necessarily for me. And then, fa fa failing that, there are some foot packs that go even slower again, so our older hounds can go there. Yep. So it, it works out for me. And then do you have any that are here on retirement? I have two or three right now um, that are here on retirement. One, two that are, you know, favorites close to my heart. And then they'll just stay and here. And they'll stay here because uh, one particular one, Minnie, made me look good more times than, than, than not. So <laughs> she deserves to stay with me. How old will these guys be when they start to hunt? About 18 months old. They'll get their first go at it. Um, right. They have a lot of training before that, but about 18 months they'll get to go hunting. And 
what's to stop them from chasing a rabbit or a deer or a raccoon or, I mean, they're a, they're a scent town. They love to follow something. Yeah, that's part of our job is to, to let them know that all we're interested in hunting is foxes. Okay. Um, and that's a combination of me and my, my other helper um, and the pack to tell them that this is what we do. Um, okay. So there, there's, there's some technical things we do and training for that, but a lot of it comes from the instinct and from the pack. Okay. Uh, and that's sort of uh, the, the term, uh, Nigel's your whippers in. He's Nile. Nile. He's uh, my whipper in. Whipper in. That, that's the term for it. So okay. he, he's kind of doing his apprenticeship to do my job. Okay. Yeah. Are you going to give him your job? Or he's going to go find he's his gonna own. He's going to have to go find his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, and it's a, it's a unique job. Super. Well, I sure appreciate no, you're more uh, than welcome. you giving us a, yeah, a little tour, tour here. here. Well, All hey, right. thank you very more much. Than, more than welcome. Anytime. All right. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Every day. I want to introduce you guys to Russell Jones. And Russell, you've been hunting with the Cheshire Foxhounds a long time. Oh, the first time I ever hunted with these hounds was in the 50s. But on a regular basis, on since the uh, uh, 60s and 70s. Okay. And what's your title here in the hunt club? I'm one of the masters. Okay. Uh, I have two joint masters, but I'm one of the three masters. And and what does that title include? What is that? What what job does that give you? Basically, we're in charge of the hunting of the hounds and dealing with the community and the landowners uh, whose property we hunt across. Uh, it can be about anything. Now, this is some just incredible country around us. How, how do you guys, how are you involved in conservation here? The preservation of this land in one way or another is a major part of what we all do. Keeping it open, and we do that through the conservation easements on the ground, land preservation agreements with the county, the sale and development rights to the county is all kinds of multiple ways that landowners can uh, preserve their land uh, way into the future. It's really important to us that all of the landowners uh, understand what we're doing, understand what we're about, and uh, we're really we're really hoping that we stay welcome uh, everywhere we go. So if we do some damage to fences or things like that, we make a big effort to get back there and fix it right away. What's the vision for fox hunting in the future? Well, it's challenged. Uh, it, it really has a lot to do with the amount of ground that's available to us. And it, has, it also has to do with a certain level of misunderstanding by the general public. Right. Uh, because we get painted into animal cruelty pictures by people that are totally uninformed about what we're doing. Our agenda is not killing foxes. Our agenda is having a chase with these hounds after a fox. The hunt is not a sight proposition, it's a scent proposition totally. So that the challenge is for these hounds to follow foxes through this country uh, by scent. And uh, when the fox gets tired of playing the game, he goes in a hole and that's the end of it. They're not really a pest. Right. And as, as other parts of the world, they try and kill them because they are a nuisance animal. Sure. We're, they're just part of our fun here, so we have no, in, no interest in, in killing them. Now, last year, uh, when I was uh, with you and I, I hunted with you last year, I got to be relatively close by accident when the fox went to ground. What amazed me was how many times we had passed that exact den on that trip that morning, and that fox had not chosen to go to ground. This is a game for them. They play with us. They play with these hounds because they are faster uh, and they're very clever. And so they enjoy watching these hounds from a distance. And they, list, they stop lots of times, listen to them, see how close they're getting, and then make a decision on what they're going to do. But it's totally a game they're playing with these hounds. The hunt club itself here, uh, when was it established? Well. Uh, let me go back one step further. There's been fox hunting in this part of the world for 300 years. Okay. It's been formalized in the last 100 years. Okay. This pack was originally established in 1912, so we're coming up on 100th year anniversary. Wow. 
And your season starts pretty actively in October? Well, we're, we're doing, starting the 1st of July, we, we do mounted hound exercise. So we start getting these hounds fitter and fitter as it goes along. We, we start what we call cubbing, which is actually letting the hounds hunt, which is the first of set Labor Day, roughly. Uh, then we're actually, these hounds are going into covers and hunting, and for two months, September and October, they'll we'll, we'd go in earlier in the morning. Then when we get to November, it's full season, all the way through the first of November. When we get full hunting, it's rarely under two and a half, three hours, and it can be as many as four hours if we're having a big day. Give me just a rundown of what tomorrow morning's gonna look like, just, just from the start to finish, of what the hunt looks like, what's going on? Well, we will all assemble at a, a pre-designated place, so there'll be 30 or 40 trailers there of people uh, bringing their horses, getting their horses, getting on their horses. These hounds will be there in the trailer until time comes to start, then everybody will assemble, Ivan, and Niall uh, will take the hounds and start down to where we're first going to hunt. And the field master, he'll be the guy who is leader of the people, will go next. And it's his job to keep those people from getting too close to the hounds, but keep them in touch with what's going on. And it'll be his job to monitor. It's a very big job, trying to monitor how those hounds are going so that the people behind him are in on the fun, but they don't interfere with the fun. And then the day will, will evolve uh, depending on the fox. As soon as we're able to find one and get him up on his feet and get him running, we'll be in pursuit. That's the excitement of it. You never have an idea where the heck you're going because you, it's out of your control. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. I so appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Well, let's hope. The weather's changed. You better be ready. I'm going to be. I'm going to be. I'm in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and I'm getting ready to have the, maybe the time of my life. Now, you have to know that even though for 20 years I've wanted to go on a fox hunt, I haven't for one day wanted to wear a pair of breeches. And the thought of riding in a sports coat was never really something that I looked forward to. And wearing neckties is completely foreign to me. If, uh, to me, a necktie is something they do to somebody that stole cattle. So I'm not really looking forward to this, right? And you're gonna wear the, the proper attire, or you're not gonna fox on it. Good old gals. Daddy now. Daddy. Daddy. Good old gals. Terrain is always an obstacle. In the fox hunt, you go where the fox goes. So what I really kind of discovered was honestly, riding is riding. Horsemanship is horsemanship, regardless of the saddle you put on. And so certainly there's a little different seat position, spending the day there mostly in two-point position, which is not a position that I'm familiar with, was certainly, you know, straining in some ways. But in the long run, you were looking out for the people that were with you. You had a goal and a task in mind, and it was about the relationship developed between you and the horse. And so, by the time the day is over, you, I had a whole lot more respect for that horse. Is he a finished rope horse that I'd love to have at home? No, he's an absolutely different animal, trained for a completely different purpose, but when it's all said and done, he's still your partner to get you through the day. More fun than you should be allowed to have horseback. As you start approaching the fence, what you had to realize, for me, what I had to realize was, it's just another stride. And as soon as you get that in your head and you wrap your head around that. That's what happens at the little one. Yeah. All of a sudden, really, the jumping wasn't that big a deal and it was a lot of fun. Because honestly, no matter how big or small the jump is, when you're on that horse, you are realizing you're back to that partnership. So at this point in the hunt, I'm having all the fun I can stand. I mean, I am, I am beside myself. 
The only slight downturn is that the hounds aren't probably making as much music as we'd like to be hearing, but we're having tons of great riding, incredible countryside. Uh, I wish you guys could all be with me. What a, what a great time I'm having. For me, it was like the ultimate in coming together. It was like riding a really good cutting horse uh, or riding a really good rope horse that just knows his job and goes to it and does it. And then it's the perfect partnership. It's an excellent family endeavor and a great family pastime, really. It's great for the hounds, it's great for the horses, it's great for the riders, and the fox is having just as much fun as they are. What a beautiful morning, an incredible time uh, to watch the fox come out of the cornfield of those hounds right on his tail. Oh, we were right there. That was just, that was really neat. And we say goodnight, regardless of the hour of the day, and thank our masters and thank our, our uh, huntsmen for giving us great sport. Neat. Well, I'll tell you what, in that case, I better say goodnight, thanks for joining us, and until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. For more information about Ken McNabb Clinic's appearances and products, visit KenMcNabb.com. One true horse, a perfect partner built to ride. One true horse, a bond that cannot be denied. You would search forever just to have the chance to take a ride on one true horse. Gonna take a ride on one true 